each of these out to the side. It's going to avoid some problems. For instance, this one's written in unit form. So 65 tenths with a decimal is what? 2.5. And then if I decimal hop twice to the right, what's my answer? 60. 650. 650. Okay. Same thing with 7 tenths. How many place values? 2. To the right. So my answer is 70. My goal for you is to not miss a bunch of these on the next test. So that's why we're reviewing. So 8 tenths divided by 10 to the second. How many place values? 2. Which way? Left. Left. So 0 decimal zero, zero, 008. Okay, the next number. Um, 3 and 895 thousandths times 10 to the third. Which way? The right. How many? Two, three. Three. Because it's 10 to the third. So 3,895. And the next one, 5,472 divided by 10 to the third. Where's the decimal? At the end. One, two, three. So this does a couple of things to help us. Number one, it gives us room to do the decimal hop. So we're not bumping into a multiplication or division sign. Number two, it lets me compare my answer after I hopped it to before I hopped it. So I make sure I'm not accidentally writing the same number twice. Because that's what most of you did when you messed up on your test last time. Okay? Take a look at this. We're only going to do two of these, even though you have three on your paper. So the first thing I want you to do is say this number. Six, Six and three hundred eighty-five thousand. Okay, that's the number we're going to round. So write it down. And we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So you can put tenth above the first Now, if I want to round to the nearest tenth, that means I need to decompose this number. If I decompose it, I want to take out the tenths. So how many tenths do I have? And have and don't tell me three. three, three Sixty-three tenths. tenths. And then I would have eighty-five thousandths, correct? Yep. Now, where's the decimal in the number? Between, Between the, the six, six, and three. six and three. So I'm letting you write that without unit form starting today. 6.3. You'll write 63 tenths as 6 and 3 tenths. What comes after 6.3? 6 6.5. No. 6.3. What comes after 6.3? 6 6.4. 6 Thomas, you were telling me the midpoint. Yes. Okay. So remind us the rule for finding the midpoint, Thomas. Add 5 to the end. Put a 5 on the end of the yes. bottom number. Unless it's a whole number, and then we've got to probably add 5. Okay? All right, so now, what, what's my next step? First of all, let's count the decimal place values in the number Three. we're rounding. Three. Three. So I only have two here. Add a zero. Add a zero. So we have place values that match. And then decide 385 thousandths, 350 thousandths. Anna, above or below the midpoint? Above. Mm -hmm. Six and 385 thousandths. So to the nearest tenth, what does it round to? Six, Six and four tenths. Okay, now we're going to do the same number. The only change is we're going to round it to the nearest hundredth. So on the next vertical number line, label it hundredths. And I want you to rewrite the number again, 6 and 385 thousandths. And I want to decompose it, but I want to take out the hundredths. So if I take out the hundredths, that's all the digits to the hundredths place. So Genesis, how many hundredths do I have? 
638. And how many thousandths left over? Five. Five. So where's my decimal in the original number? After the six. So that's where I put it. So what comes after 6.38? 6.39. 6 6.39. And the midpoint? 6.385. Which is actually the number we're rounding, isn't it? Whoops. Yep. So what do I do when the number I'm rounding is actually the midpoint? Do I circle the midpoint? Daniel? You always go to the, to the top. The midpoint always rounds up. Some kids accidentally circle the midpoint because they're like, oh, I found a number. But we don't ever circle the midpoint, do we? No. We, did, we use the midpoint to decide, do I round up or do I stay the same? Okay, that's enough for that. This is kind of a review. We're taking division and changing it to unit form. So the first one, 14 ones. Divided by 2 equals what, Daniel? Um, 7. 7 what? Uh, tenths. Wait, no, 1. Ones. The next one, 14 tenths. So I change 1.4 to 14 tenths. Divided by 2 equals what, boys and girls? 7 tenths. 7 tenths. So rewrite that in standard form. You know what you're doing on this page. Okay, I'm going to push pause while we go ahead and complete these. So Anna, tell me what you put on this one that I skipped. Okay, that's what I did to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and write that because it's really not wrong. But don't change yours if this isn't what you wrote. I started looking at that, and I went, wait a minute. I think there should be a pattern here. And I'm not seeing a pattern if I've got ones, and then one, and tenths. See how these have patterns? Ones, tenths, hundredths. And they move over one place value each time. So then I went back, and I went, I don't think I'm supposed to be in the ones place. So those of you who didn't write that, what do you think we need to write instead? Ten. Ten. So three tens. And the answer would be one ten. Now does it look like I have a pattern? Yes. One ten, one one, and one ten. So that makes sense. There's really no, there's really no other reason. Thirty ones would work here fine. And we've done it like that many times, haven't we? But that's the pattern we see on this one. Okay, you Daniel? If you got it wrong. Um, no, you don't have to change it. Why is the tens... Oh. Anyway. Because it's ten times larger than the ones. Remember that? Oh, yeah. And the ones is ten times larger than the tens. Okay. This is... We're not going to have time for all of this today. So let's just do the first part of the problem. If we have time at the end of the lesson, we'll come back and do the extension, okay? So, and we might, since this is block four, we might have time. So I've got, at first, I looked at this and thought, well, I guess I put an area model on there. Then I went, no, I don't think so. So let me read this problem, and we'll see what you think this is. So a bag of potato chips, so visualize a bag of potato chips in your mind, okay? has 96 grams of sodium. If the bag is split into eight equal servings, I'm kind of thinking this must be a bigger bag of potato chips. Yeah, like if we're going to split size. it into eight, okay? So we and need to find seven. how many grams of sodium will be in each serving. So then I went, well, this isn't multiplication. It's division. It's division. How do I know it's division? Because it it's says split. Split. That's definitely dividing, isn't it? Okay. So this can't be an area model. What do you think it is? Diagram. Tape diagram. So start with that. 
My total bag has 96 grams of sodium. How many equal servings do we have? Eight. So I'm going to divide it into eight equal servings. And then to figure out one serving, just going to be one of these boxes. Now I'm going to go ahead and write this problem in standard form. And then I want to talk about some ways we're going to solve it. So that's the problem, 96 hundredths divided by 8. So what could I do to solve the problem? Let's talk about the decimal first. What could I do with the decimal? Thomas? You could do, well, you can't do the decimal. No. But you can use the, pretend like the decimal is right there. Okay, so that, now what's that called when I take the decimal out? Yeah. Unit form. So I could write it like this. Go ahead and write it like this. 96 hundredths divided by 8. We'll figure out the answer in a minute. Now, do you remember when I said yesterday, okay, if I'm dividing by a whole number, the place value I start with needs to be the place value I end with, right? Okay, so what multiplication problem could I use to figure out the answer to this? Um, oh, eight times. I don't, don't shout it out. I want everyone to have a chance to think about it. Well, let's get close. 8 times 10 would give me 80, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's all I'm going to do. You can keep thinking. See if you can figure it out. 8 times 10 isn't big enough, is it? All right. Yosin. 12. He's right. So now if I'm go, I'm going to go ahead and finish it in unit form. I have to write 12 hundredths right here, correct? Yes. Okay. And then how do I write 12 hundredths in standard form? Good. So the answer to the problem is each serving gets 12 grams. Zero, 12 each hundreds. serving has 12 hundredths grams of sodium. That's only six words. It's okay. Of sodium. Any Which is salt. <laughs> okay, so that's the RDW. Did a good job there, okay? Now I'm going to talk about this problem before we move on to our lesson. I want you to put your pencils down. I'm going to clear this out. You don't have to write anything. Clear objects. No! I think I'll just delete it the old-fashioned way. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so I want to think about this problem. My problem was 96 hundredths divided by 8, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going to talk about Mrs. Concannon. I have lots of respect for her, and I've used her um, idea ever since Caitlin and Claire told me about it when they were in probably fourth or fifth grade. I was teaching third grade at the time, and I was thinking, okay, these kids are not remembering to put the largest number on top when we subtract. So I thought, well, I'll just ask Caitlin and Claire how they remember. And they said, oh, it's easy. Just the big dog goes on top. Yep, that's what Okay, now just listen, all right? Because some of you are going to take a walk down memory lane, and that's fine, okay? And so I said, the big dog, what in the world is a big dog? And they said, well, Mrs. Concannon told us that the big dog is the big number in math and in football it's OU. And I said, well, I'm not sure I agree with her about OU, but I kind of like this math idea. So when I'm subtracting, the big dog goes on top. What does that mean? Over, it's the the largest number. number, okay? In fifth grade, it's going to be a little bit different than that. And I want to show you why. So let's just say I'm going to use her idea for division. She said, yeah, and when we divide, 
the big dog goes in the cave. Goes in the dog house. Okay? So here's my dog house, which is a division sign. And I want to tell you, this right here is never a way to write a division problem. That's a multiplication problem with the wrong sign. Okay? But we won't ever write it like that. So what does that mean the big dog goes in the dog house? Well, let's talk about mathematical terms. The number outside of the dog house is the divisor, and it has seven letters. The number inside of the dog house is called the dividend, dividend and it has eight letters. Because I teach fifth grade, I can't say the big dog, the largest number, goes in the doghouse. I have to say the number with the most digits. And here's why. Because if I take 96 hundredths divided by 8, which number is larger there? 8. 8. Well, why isn't it in the doghouse? We just said the big dog goes in the doghouse. It doesn't work in fifth grade, does it? It has to be the number with the most digits, just like this word has the most letters. Can, can that help you remember it? Yes. So we're not actually going to do this problem right now. We're going to do some like it later. But that's why we can't put the big dog in the doghouse. We have to put the number, the dividend, in the doghouse. And most of the time in fifth grade, it has the most what? Digits. 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 Okay? All right. So let's get going with our lesson. Now, this is what I changed after block one. So go ahead and turn the page. And you are going to need a highlighter if you can keep from playing with it. So go ahead and get the highlighter out. So I'm going to take the first problem, and you notice on yours, these, I have no idea why the book said problem one, and then it gave us two problems. But I just wrote it, so on your paper, I kind of separated it. You see, I put one at the top and one at the bottom. Oh, yeah. Okay? And you're going to have to quit messing with your markers and stuff, because I need you to focus. So there's a couple things we need to do to set up the first problem. Number one, let's put it on the standard algorithm. So 6 and 72 hundredths divided by 3. Where does the 3 go? In the dividend. In the dividend. The 3. The oh, divisor. divisor. It's the divisor. So it goes on the outside. You're okay. I just asked you what you, I asked you the opposite of what you thought. And then the 6 and 72 hundredths goes inside the doghouse. Okay, now just listen. What was that I told you yesterday? The place value I start with. The place value you end with. Will be the one I end with. So this one will be in the hundredths also. So on, and that's only when I divide by a whole number. So here you just get to pop your decimal right up to the top. And you're done with it. You don't have to mess with it anymore. Because that shows hundreds. No, don't erase it. Look, this shows hundreds. Here's the ones place. Here's the tenths place. Here's the hundreds place. So that's the automatic way to make sure it ends up in the right place. Put it straight up. Okay? Now to set, to set up the problem, we need to do a couple things. Number one... About, just a little ways down, make a double line. That's going to be like separating two parts of our chart. So make a double line. And then what was my divisor, boys and girls? Three. Three. So down here I need three equal size columns. To the best of my, not columns, rows. To the best of my ability, get them equal. So you've got a section up here, and then you've got three places at the bottom. Eva, can you get the door, please? Now I'm going to place my dividend on the place value chart. And I'm going to use the tens frame model. With highlighter? 
with your highlighter. So that's what 6 looks like. 7 would be 5 and 2, and hundreds would just be 2. Okay, so this problem's set up and ready to go. And I'm going to go back and forth between the place value chart and the standard algorithm. Okay? And the reason you have to know how to do this, it's on the problem set and the exit ticket. Okay? So I didn't make these rules, but I followed them. So here we go. Let's say I'm going to divide these six ones into three equal groups. Tobias, how many would I put in each group? Two. So go ahead and do that now with your highlighter. Now switch back to your pencil. If I do six in each group, or two in each group, that uses up all six of these, doesn't it? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So cross out all six of them. What does that look like on the standard algorithm? It looks like three groups of two equals six with none left over. Because I divided and then I subtracted. Here's my crossing off subtraction, okay? Now, just let me keep going, all right? The next step is to go to the next place value and take a look at it. When I take a look at this next place value, what do I do in my standard algorithm? Putting your number versus... Bring the next number down. And we'll talk about does McDonald's serve cheeseburgers in a little bit. But I, I, want, I want to do it this way first. Okay? I know you did. I know you did. So now I'm going to take these seven tenths. Do you see them in the tenths place? Uh -huh. And I'm going to divide them into three equal groups. I don't want to hear the highlighters tapping on the table. Daniel, how many will I put in each group? Um, three. Three in each group is nine. Three, six, nine. That won't work. I've only got seven. Um, one, wait, no. Two. Is that six again? Yes. Yep. So if I subtract six... I have one left over. Okay, just a minute. So after you've done that, let's go to the standard algorithm. Three groups of two equals six. And if I subtract, I have one left over. Your standard algorithm matches the place value chart exactly, doesn't it? Okay, so now... What do I do with this extra? Carry it. I'm actually going to take it back a place value. Remember when we multiplied and we circle a group of 10 and move them forward? Mm -hmm. Now we're taking it back and we're trading it back in for what? 10. Trading it back in for 10. So 10 hundredths is the same thing as 1 tenth. Okay, Morgan. Now that I have those traded in, how many hundredths do I have? 12. So if I bring down my 2, is that how many hundredths I have? Yes. yes, it is. Now divide 12 into three equal groups. Jose? 4. You're right. And when I subtract, 3 times 4 equals 12. I should end up with zero. Okay, we're going to do another one on the place value chart, and then we'll talk about McDonald's and cheeseburgers and all that, okay? But I want to make sure you understand how to do this on the place value chart. So you're going to go down to the next box. I'm actually going to get rid of all this. Okay, so what's the next problem I have? Five and sixteen hundredths. Five and sixteen hundredths divided by four. four. 
So my place value chart will look a little different. Did you notice I already popped my decimal up? Yeah. yeah. Because I'm dividing by a whole number, my place value will stay the same. Okay, so give me that double line. And then how many rows below will we need this time? Four. Four. Because we, we are dividing by four. Into four equal groups. Next step. Place your number on the place value chart. Okay, now I'm ready to divide. The first number I have is what? Four. Five. Four. And I'm going to divide into four equal groups. So how many will be One. in each group? Good. And how many will be left over after I subtract. One. Okay. What does that look like on the standard algorithm? Four times one equals four, and one left over when I subtract. So the same thing is true. I'm going to regroup the 1, 1 into ten. 10 tenths. So how many tenths do I have now? 11. 11. Okay, so I'm going to bring down my 1. Now I'm going to take 11 and divide it into four equal groups. Two. Two in each group. Because... 4 times 3 would be 12, and that's too much. So 2 in each group. That would leave me 8. So I'm going to cross off 8. 1. How many do I have left? 3. Okay, so let's put this on the standard algorithm. 4 groups of 2 equals 8. And 11 minus 8 is 3. So that's what I see here. Now, this is a Mrs. Lewis version of it. I'm going to circle those three groups, regroup them into 30, and I'm not writing 30 dots, sorry. I did. That's fine, but I just put the number 3, 0. So now in the hundreds place, now that I've got those regrouped, how many dots do I have? Pretending this is 30 36. dots. 36. So when I bring down my 6, that gives me 36. 36 divided into 4 equal groups. Maria. 9. Here's how Mrs. Lewis is going to write it. And that should give me nothing left over. Because 4 times 9 equals what? 36. 36. So what do you think? Confusing. I'm Not sorry. Really. 